<laughs> you're gonna you're gonna cut these parts, yes, right? <laughs> Pessoal, tudo bem? No vídeo de hoje eu estou aqui com o Flávio. Ei, ei. Hey. <risos> Flávio tá aqui para mais um episódio dessa série de vídeos que vocês estão acompanhando. E o Flávio já é meu amigo aqui. Se vocês verem alguns nos meus Snapchat, nas minhas redes sociais, ele aparece lá sempre. E ele tá entendendo algumas coisas que eu tô falando. Vocês vão um saber já por quê. Um pouquinho. Um pouquinho. <risos> nós vamos falar um pouco sobre como vim estudar fora sem programa, sem nada. Você vinha assim por você, porque o Flávio ele tá aqui estudando por ele mesmo e ele vai explicar um pouquinho como é isso. Então vamos começar. Let's begin? Let's begin. Você quer fazer em português? Não, não, não. 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 <risos> português não. Uh, to begin, say your name, your age, your major and your country because you're not from here. Okay, I'm Flavio Chavarri. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Peru and I study business management. And Flavio, you are here in the US for how long? I've been here like for two semesters. Two semesters. And this is my third one, so I'm considered to be a sophomore now. How did it come the idea of studying abroad? It's because like studying in the US was always my dream. So the best place to study business is mm. America. So I, I decided to come here anyways to be better in my major and to have more opportunities in the future. But have you never think about studying your country? Have you always think about study here? Well, I studied for one semester in Peru and after that, like, I always decided to come here. As you say, have you always think about USA not on another country? Well, I always dreamed to be here in the US, but I also thought about South Africa and England. And after you decided I'm going to study abroad, what was the first step? The first step was taking the TOEFL, that is mm -hmm. the regular examination for, for people that don't speak English. They're not native. Yeah, so I took the TOEFL and after taking the TOEFL, I also took the SAT. That is kind of like the regular test for all students that are in high school. So after doing that, I just have to do some essays, some applications online, and that's practically it. But the SAT, like you did in your country? Yeah, I did it in my country. You have the SAT in your country? Yeah, like you just have to go to any place that... Specific place? Is for, with the US Embassy or oh, some kind of that okay. association, so you can take the SAT. I believe that in Brazil there are many places. So you did this and it was approved by this exam? Yes, like I didn't have like a good grade in the TOEFL mm -hmm. especially. But enough to, to yeah, come. Yeah, exactly. And after you did these exams and you passed it, you had a good grade to come. What were the next steps? Like, in summarize the whole process. What did you do? Like, first, in the application, sometimes you have to do some essays that are kind of hard. Mm -hmm. So you spend a lot of time doing that essays because, like, each college has a different type of essay. So you spend a lot of time doing that, and also the applications online. And you go to an admission process that takes, like, from two to three months. So after doing that, like, the university calls you or send you emails to say hey you, you're missing this or that so you have to send them the transcripts mm -hmm. from high school and from the college you've been to and after that you just have to talk with them and see if you are admitted or not to the program but this is says you only have to do after you contact the college no it depends like if you want to apply to a college you have to go to the university page and put into admission go to the admission part like there are some questions that require you like your ID your everything your age and part of that admission process is that you have to write an essay so it's kind mm. of one of the first things you have to do so you write an essay for a specific college like no one essay for all of the college no it's for a specific college it's like for example one college can ask you do an essay for what you want to study in mm -hmm. this thing or the other college can ask you like what are your goals for your future and did you apply to like a lot of colleges or just a few colleges yeah I apply like almost to Ten colleges. Oh, ten. ten colleges, yeah. <laughs> a lot, a of, lot of Yeah. Many states. I always wanted to go to Oregon, mm -hmm. to the other part, but I'm here, so I'm okay. happy to be here. And did you apply like to the famous states like California, New York? Uh, no, not really, because like it's really expensive to study uh -huh. there. So I prefer to not spend too much money in my undergraduate to do my graduate studies, I prefer to go to a good college, like oh. one in California or in the Ivy League. I would like to know if it's too expensive to apply a college here, because we have an idea if it's like, like impossible, it's too much money. So do you have an idea of how much did you spend on the whole process of application? Well, okay, like 
In the TOEFL, the TOEFL costs around $200. The SAT is around $200 as well, and the application for each university is around $50 to $70. That's, and it depends like how many colleges you apply to, to know how much you're going to spend. But with the college, you, you only have to pay these amounts of the application? Yes, just that, $50. $50 to $70, it depends on so the So it's not too expensive, with the application? No, not really. But there are also some colleges that can like cost like $150, $100. Mm. It also depends. In the college. After you were accepted here in WKU, you, you were accepted only here or in another college? No, I was accepted also in colleges with the ESLI program. I was also accepted to the University of Oregon, to Arizona State. And you didn't want to go to Oregon? Hold. It's because like WKU was the one that gave me the most scholarship. So oh. I get a really good scholarship here and I made some really good friends. So I decided to stay. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and after you got accepted in WKU, what did you have to do? Well, well, first I have to go to the U.S. Embassy to get my visa, to get my mm -hmm. I-20. That you have to have that to <laughs> to get here, you know. And that's that's easy because the university also contact the U.S. Embassy and do that. And they so. give a letter of acceptance. Yeah, they give a letter of acceptance. So that's that's it's easy. It's not hard. It's not hard. And after that, I learned a lot of English by myself, and I also took some classes because I thought, oh. I'm going to be in the US, so I have to be more prepared and also start reading a lot of in, in English. So that helped me a lot when I arrived here. And who helped you with a lot of things like to find a dorm, to find, a, I don't know, all of these meals and this whole thing? Well, actually, one person that really helped me in Peru is called Sandro Molina, that he do everything with the education in the US. Mm -hmm. So he helped me to be aware of the things that were going to mm -hmm. happen to me. And when I arrived here, I contacted with my advisor, with my academic advisor, and also with the international students office that is over there. So I talk with them and I make really good contacts. So this person helped you in Peru, like it was a friend, or like a person who was able to to help with this. Yeah, it was just a person that was in charge for the ah. people that want to study in the US. And I also, I used to send a lot of emails to <laughs> to everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't care actually. I just sent emails like 10 or 15 emails per day. So I really wanted to study here. So Yeah, it's, it's one thing that people don't understand because they think that people who come here to study by themselves just comes like so easy. Yeah. But it's not so easy. You have to like send a lot of emails. You have to write essays. If you want to do this, you really really have to wonder. You have yes. to go and search what you have to do, what is next. Yes, that's true. And how did you spend here until now, like in per semester? Per semester I spent around $12,000, $11,000, including everything. Everything at all. Dorms, meals. Dorms, meals, trips, every, tuition and everything. Oh, and the tuition is important, yes. Yeah. But the tuition you pay just once? Just once. Just, just one once. per semester. And this amount is different because you're international students, it's the same for Americans? Like, there are two types of tuition. One is the out of the state and one is in the state. Mm -hmm. So the, per the people that live here and also live from places like around this area paying an in the state tuition that is almost like a half of the tuition that pays are people from the out of state tuition. So international students are the ones that pay the most. Mm -hmm. So they pay like almost the double that um, an American pays. So. But these out of states, like if you are here from Kentucky, and you are from around Kentucky, you pay a value, and if you like from the other part of the country, pay it different. It's yes. not for the whole country, the same. No, it's not for no. the whole country. But do you have scholarships like this amount for every international student? Yes, I, I have a scholarship that WKU gave me like last semester. I was really happy because I was about to transfer to another school. Mm because I did, my parents couldn't afford. But the International Students Office that helped me with all the admission process and everything, I made really good friends there and they decided to give me a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And I was really happy with that. So I just paid the difference between the outer state and the inner state tuition. Mm -hmm. So it's really good for me. And for you, what is the most important part of studying abroad? The most important part for me is that you have the opportunity to make friends from all around the world and to experience another culture Mm -hmm. knowing different values and different things that people can offer to you. You have different kind of professors that teach you how things work. And the opportunity to study in the U.S. is not just for learning. It's just, it's because like you want to experience something else. You want to go outside and change the things that you normally do and have the opportunity. Think outside of the box. Exactly. And this is one thing that I always say here in my channel, that the most important thing is not that you're going to learn English. Of course it's important, but the most 
more important things is like you can learn things from different countries, you can respect more other cultures, so... Yes, that's true. <laughs> I'm sweating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's not hard to hear. Are you yeah. nervous? Yeah, <laughs> it's the camera. <laughs> if you go back in time, would you have changed something? Like changed the country, changed the age you come? Because you came here so young. So young yeah. yes. You came, came here, you, you were? When I was 17. Probably not, because I'm really happy with, it, with the things that I've done here. But one thing that I could change is like, I did a ESLI program in fall. Probably I would do it like in the summer, so I don't like waste a complete semester. But don't you think it, you you got more prepared because you did a whole semester? Well, that's also true. That's also true. But the thing is that the time that you have to a complete semester, like a fall or in a spring semester, is like four months, mm -hmm. and the summer one is like two months. You start doing your major, you want to finish it as fast as you can. Oh, really? So if you can reduce the amount of credit hours, it's perfect for you. Okay, about your age, you don't think it's a problem? Well, I think it depends with the person because like, for me, it was okay. It was okay because I could make friends from 17 to 25, mm -hmm. 26, and it was normal. It makes you some troubles because like, for example, if you want to buy some medicine, you can't buy medicine until you are 18. Mm -hmm. And you have some kind of those problems but after that but you can it, handle it yes it's just a thing of personality if you are prepared for something and you want to do it you just yeah it's okay you'll do it, it. Yeah. yeah and just a question it's not here but you visit your country like every year yes yes i always <laughs> thanks to god like my parents always say hey flavio you have to come here every time and i say well that sounds perfect so <laughs> you go by like two times per year yeah two times per year okay. and what do you say for the people wait, wait, who are <laughs> I, was, okay. I was like this. <laughs> okay. What do you say for the people who are watching us now, who want to study abroad, but in the moment it's not like a reality, so what do you say for the people? Well, first you have to think about the program you will have, you'll want to do, because there are many things to do around the world. Yes. And first you have to focus on one or two that you really want to do. After that, you have to focus on the country where you want to go. And the third thing, and then that's the most difficult one, is to do everything that they require you to do. They require like you. they require you a lot of things, and sometimes you just left it there and say, mm, oh, "I'll do it later." It's too hard. Do it. Yeah, but you cannot do it. But you have to do it because everything, everything is possible. Like they can give you scholarship. There are opportunities. There are scholarships from other sides from other places, there are foundations, and those people are, are here for help, to help you. So mm -hmm. you have to take an advantage to every opportunity you have, also take an advantage with the people that you, you met here and the people you contact with, because that people, in my case, were the ones that helped me to get the scholarship. So I'm really grateful with those people and really grateful with Western Kentucky to make my dream come true. And I know that every person that wants to study in a country like the US or England or any, any place can do it. That's all. Thank you so much oh, for no. being here. Thank He's you. so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and you can say something for Brazil in Portuguese, of course. Portuguese, okay. Yeah. He's learning Portuguese, so he's very good. Okay. Oi, gente. Você pode... Seguir Cynthia no su canal de YouTube. Fala para se inscrever. What? <laughs> <laughs> se inscrever, subscribe. Yeah, você tem que subscribir. Eh, muito obrigado por esta oportunidade. Hum, muito obrigada a você por estar aqui. Então, gente, é isso. Como o Flávio falou, se inscreve aqui no canal, deixe seu gostei. Escreve aqui nos comentários qual a dúvida que você tem, que qualquer coisa até eu posso perguntar a ele, né? Qualquer dúvida que tiver, eu posso aqui vir aqui, perturbar Flávio, perguntar a ele. E não esquece de ver os próximos vídeos. Acompanhe aqui, se inscrevendo no canal, que você não perde nenhum vídeo. Me segue nas redes sociais também, que eu sempre posto as coisas lá. Então é isso. Até a próxima. Um beijo. E See you. Tchau. 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 <laughs> oh my hard. god. It was it was terrible. <laughs>